Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your Manchester United Transfer News Daily where we talk about all the latest Manchester United Transfer News and give it that real fan opinion. Smash a like, we've got the hotter meter on today. I'll talk about that in a moment. We'll also be talking about Alexandro, Bruno Fernandes, Alexis Sanchez, Paolo Dybala, Harry Maguire and a lot more. Um, let's start off though with the hotter meter. For those who've not seen it over the last couple of weeks, it will be making an appearance throughout the summer and basically... It's our United stand uh, ranking on who is most likely to sign for United. It's going to change week by week, day by day, maybe, uh, based on who, uh, who 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 we're most likely to sign. As you can see, Daniel James has come in. He certainly wasn't in there last week. Um, and also Kuli Bali's entered in there as well. So Bruno Fernandes is still number one as far as I'm concerned. Six out of ten chance, 60%. Daniel James, level with him, 60% chance. I think we'll sign him at the moment. Then you've got Munier and Manalas, 50% chance. Gareth Bale 40%, Cooley Barley and Steven Bergwijn 30%. They're my top seven signings for Manchester United at the moment. Let's see uh, how many of these we end up getting right through the summer. Uh, Alderweireld's dropped out mainly because I just think that um, you know he is a cheap option, but I don't think we'll go for him. I really don't. Um, and also Jaden Sancho, I think he's out of the question at this moment in time. So Bruno Fernandes, number one at the moment. And very interesting. I'm going to start off with Bruno Fernandes, actually, because um, there is talk in Portugal about Bruno Fernandes. Manchester United, Man City it seems to update every every single day. Um, but I wanted to put this to you lot. With regards to Bruno Fernandes, I think many of us would like us to sign him. He's had a fantastic season for Sporting Lisbon um, and, and ready to make that move, certainly. Lots of goals, lots of assists. Centre midfielder, can play box to box but also can play attacking midfield. Um, links with Man City, 24, I think he's 25 very, very soon. So he's perfect sort of age, really, to go and express himself at a bigger club. Um, Manchester United looking to pay £70 million for him. Manchester City wanting to pay around £40 to £60 million with players going the other way. Um, United effectively trying to secure Fernandes over Man City by paying more than Man City want to do. Is that the right thing for Manchester United to do? We've spoken about this quite a lot over the last fortnight. We did it with Fred. We did it with Sanchez. It didn't work. Man City wanted both of those players. We overpaid and it's not worked out. Is it going to be third time lucky or is it a mistake again? Should United outbid Man City for Bruno Fernandes? Is that the good idea to be doing that? Do we need to do it because we're now sixth and we can't compete with Champions League clubs without overpaying? Or do you want us to stop doing that? Personally, I think in this situation, if you have to pay 10, 10 million pounds, we're a victim of who we are. We are a team. I don't want us to be doing this. I want players to come to the club because they want to come here. But are you going to get top quality players by doing that? Because if you offer the same as Man City and the players got to make their choice, they're going to go to Man City. But then if you pay a little bit, bit more, are you just getting somebody who wants to come here for money? It's an interesting one. I want your comments on that. Let's also talk about Alexandro. Um, we seem to get linked to Alexandro every year and I find this one quite an interesting one, if not a strange one. Uh, Tuto Sport, I think it was, who, who reported it from Italy. I read it on Sport Witness. Um, that uh, Manchester United linked to Alexandro uh, and Man City linked to Alexandro. Now he's 28 and a half. So is he north of where we would want to be signing a player anyway? He's also a left back and we've got Luke Shaw there. I know there are some people who don't like Luke Shaw. With regards to Alexandro, the reason we are linked to him, and let me get this right, is because there is a left back at uh, Fernand Mandy at Lyon who is in his early 20s. He event us after him and would bring him in at the expense of Alexandro. Um, my, I mean, my, I mean, my immediate thought is, is as I read in the article, uh, why would United not be trying to get the the Leon left back, who's younger and fits what we're looking for, rather than going for Alexandro? You'd pay about forty million pounds for him. We're also in for Cancelo from Juventus as well. So why would we be signing two of their fullbacks? It, I don't think United are going to be signing a left back. I really, really don't. But Alexandro. He's a left back that people will be shouting out. I can hear them at the screen now. You've always wanted to sign Sandro Mark. You're on about him last year. And I was disappointed we didn't get him last year or the year before. But, you know, when you don't get a player, you lose a year. When you don't get a player two years ago, it's two years further on. Alexandro at 27 and a half, Alexandro at 26 and a half, is very different to Alexandro at 28 and a half, turns 29 in January. So I don't think he is the sort of signing that we should be looking at because you'd be benching Luke Shaw for that sort of uh, player. And I just think, look, is Alexandro a better left-back than Luke Shaw? Probably. Ben Chilwell, I think, is. But the, but for United at the moment, Luke Shaw 
is a position that we shouldn't be looking at. We need to solve about seven or eight positions before we start talking about a left back. So spending £40 million on a new left back for me is a waste of £40 million when there's loads of other areas that need immediate surgery. So it would be a no from me, but it's an interesting story. Uh, would you sign Alexandro? Is that the sort of player that you would want to bring into United? There's no doubting his qualities. I've, you know, I've done countless videos on Sandro over the years. He's, he's a very, very good left back. And, he, and, and I believe he probably is better than Luke Shaw, but is it what we should be spending on right now? Get your comments in below about that one. Um, and Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire, um, Leicester's centre-back. I've said this a few times, and it's why Cooley Barley's moved into my hotter meter, because um, I know a lot of people would be quite excited that I've put Cooley Barley in the top seven signings I think we're going to make for the, for, at the moment. Um, but I, I do know that Mourinho wanted to sign Cooley Barley, and I just feel that United may well have kept that deal carried it on Mourinho doesn't have a club so why would United move away from Cooley Barley who everybody knows is one of the world's best centre-backs so I just feel that United are in for him um, but if we're not I think if Pogba goes to Real Madrid then maybe we maybe it's a big maybe maybe we could get Varane as part of that deal and if neither of them come to Manchester United then Harry Maguire surely is an option for Manchester United Leicester uh, being li linked with Tarkovsky at Burnley who I think would be a, a decent centre-back for them especially if they make 70 to 75 million pounds from us for Harry Maguire um, 26 Harry Maguire and only just 26 so perfect sort of age done a World Cup you know, he's proven he can do it at the highest level. Uh, he's doing very, very well for Leicester. I mean, for me, I think if Leicester had had Brendan Rodgers at the start of the season, they would have been competing with us for sixth. And they may as well, they may well have beaten us. I think they're a better team. So, But Harry Maguire, without question, would see United as a step up because it is. Leicester to Manchester United is a big step up. And I think he would like the move. Would he improve us? Well, look, I'd improve us at centre-back. You'd improve us at centre-back. Lindelof's the only decent centre-back we've got. Um, there's talk of Twan Seabee coming back, but... I don't think you can start the season with Twan CB and Lindelof. I, I still think United need a dominant uh, centre-back. And, you know, bring Twan CB back by all means. Let's have three good centre-backs fighting for two spots. Instead of every time we get an injury or suspension, you've got to play Smalling or Jones. So I would like Harry Maguire at Manchester United. Um, I would, I, I, If we spend £70 million on him, I know a lot of people are, oh, I'm not, not too sure, I'm not too sure. I, I think the way he brings the ball out the back, his left foot, um, his ability in the air. I think he would solve a lot of problems for United. And I think that's the way I look at football and that's the way I look at United now. It is about solving particular problems at Manchester United. We need a centre-back who can take the ball off the goalkeeper and bring it out from the back. Harry Maguire can do that. We need a bit of leadership. He can certainly do that. And we need somebody who's dominant in the air, both on defending crosses and getting on the end of crosses. And he can do that. You buy a centre-back who can do those three things and we're, we've already improved massively. And Cooley Barley would improve us in that area. Varane would improve us in that area. And Harry Maguire would improve us in that area. So that's what I want from a centre-back and I would be happy with Harry Maguire. So get your comments in below about him. Um, do give us your comments on the hotter meter, by the way. It's, I mean, that's just my opinion. Whenever I bring it into the show, and we'll probably do it a couple of times a week because obviously doing it every day would be a bit pointless unless there's been some big news. But um, that's my current top seven signings and I've given it a score out of 10 as to the likelihood. I'm sure if we, as we get closer to signings, we might get a few eight or nine out of tens. But what would your top five be at the moment? Realistically, who do you think we're going to sign? Because it's a personal thing. You might really think we're going to sign somebody else. Uh, so do get your comments in below about that. I did also want to just mention a couple of things about um, Alexis Sanchez as well. Um, there's talk that Juventus are interested. And there's talk of potentially a swap with Dybala and Sanchez. I would rank this as about 0.01 out of 10. I mean, it really is like dropping your ice cream on the floor and, and it falling in a big pile of crap, lifting it up and then saying to Juventus, you've just had a brand new ice cream, do you want to swap? And then going, yes, and then licking the crap that we've just dropped ours into. Um, why, why, why would anybody be so stupid as to want Alexi Sanchez, but also on top of that, to swap him for one of their better players? I just do not see this at all as being a likelihood Um I, I think we're going to really struggle to get rid of Alexis Sanchez. He came out with that message, didn't he, after the uh, the game at the weekend, talking about, you know, effort levels and United can get back to where they were. And I think, well, you know, talk is cheap and you're not cheap. You're very expensive. You're a very expensive mistake. And I think because of that, we're stuck with him. We overpaid. Nobody's going to be stupid enough to go near him. And he's got three years left on his contract. If we can remove Sanchez from the club this summer, I'll tell you what, I'll applaud it. Whoever's in charge, 
you know, that is a fantastic bit of business, but I can't see it. I think we're stuck with a player that is sinking this club because of the wage structure he, he, he he's created and also because we've got to give him game time and he's, he's appalling as a footballer. So if we can get Alexis Sanchez out of the club, fantastic. But I think we're really, we're really going to struggle with that, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, won't we? We'll have to wait and see. Um, just on, in relation to people leaving the club as well, I mean, I think the list is so, so long. Um, and I think that I, I don't even want to speculate. Somebody said, can you do a hotter meter out of 10 for people who are going to leave the club? Well, obviously, we've lost Herrera and Valencia. I think I would rank people like Darmian as a 9 out of 10 that they're going to go. I think Rojo would be my next one, probably about 7 out of 10. There's a few 6 out of 10s. Um, I would say Mata is a 6 out of 10 that he will go. I think that then De Gea and Pogba, I would put at 50-50. That's how high I think there is a chance of them going. I'm 50-50 whether they're going to go. And then you start dropping lower, even though I think these players should leave. I'd put Sanchez and Lukaku at only a 30% chance they're going to leave. Three out of 10 for them. And then I think, you know, people like, you know, Lingard, your Rashford, your Matic, your Young, your Jones... I wouldn't even give them a 1 out of 10. I don't think there's even a 10% chance. I think they're 100% staying at Manchester United. So certainly get your comments in below about that. If you uh, have a, an opinion on you know who's going to go and, and what the likelihood is, maybe we could change that hotter meter um, and, and do that, actually. It's quite a good idea. But um, let me just uh, draw your attention to the link in the video description, which is Football Index. Remember, you can play this, and the summer is the time to play. You've got to be over 18, and please do gamble responsibly if you are going to play. But as you can see, it is the football stock market game where you can buy shares in real-life players and make yourself a little bit of money in the process. There are forums. There are loads of things you can just use your own uh, intuition or you can have a look around some forums and that um, but basically price will go up based on um, uh, transfer news over the summer and, 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 it, and it goes up quite a lot I mean if you look at that at the moment this is the top 200 players Declan Rice okay he's had a quite a decent season but if you look at his price he's down below like 25p he's up to nearly two quid and that is because of transfer interest in him same with Tammy Abraham um, and a few others but if you look at my portfolio at the moment um, I've got a profit of 250 quid at the moment um, and that's my portfolio. I mean, I've made I've, I've made a loss on De Bruyne and Ronaldo and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, to be honest. But look at Mason Greenwood, the profit I've made on him. He's definitely a player you should be buying shares in on. He's up to three twenty nine a share. He'll be up to five pounds by next season. Um, also, I've got Cal Calab Koulibaly. He's certainly going to go up in value because he will move. Bergwijn, Gomez, Icardi, Tahith Chong, Pogba. He's going to go up in value over the summer because there'll be a lot of transfer news around him. So the link is in the video description for that. If you want to play Football Index over the summer, do sign up. Like I said, I would go in with about 20 quid so you can buy a few shares in different players. And I would be looking at players that are either young and are going to go up in value over the summer and over next season or players that are going to be involved in big transfers. Now's the time to get on that. Um, remember, you've got to be over 18 and please do gamble responsibly. Anyway, get your comments in below about everything we have discussed today. Alexandro, Fernandez, Maguire, Dybala, the hotter meter. Um, speak to you all soon. Back again tonight at 8 o'clock. Subscribe if you're new, smash a like and uh, remember Football Index in the link in the video description. Speak to you all soon.